Good evening, I'm Sarah Lebrek and this is 11 o'clock news from Bahrain TV. In line with the security efforts to maintain security and combat terrorism, security bodies seized a number of explosive material in addition to a number of weapons. The terrorist members were arrested as they confessed receiving military training from Iran's Revolutionary Guards and Iraq's Hezbollah. After the public prosecution was notified and legal proceedings were taken, the bomb squad and forensic teams were deployed to the relevant locations. The forensic team collected evidence suspected to be explosives and removed them to a safe location away from the residential area where they were being stored. The crime scene team classified the confiscations in the presence of the public prosecution. Among the confiscations were weapons, remote control devices, communication devices and batteries typically used in the detonation of bombs, e-boards, mobile phones, telephone chips, electronic keys and wires were also found. The police also seized daggers, knives covered with pliurethane bags and various currencies. The initial investigation indicates Mohammed Abdul Jalil Mahdi Jasim Abdullah, arrested 28 years old, works for a private company, received military training in Iran, including a pistol and automatic weapons training such as Kalashnikovs and PKG. He also received training in bomb making and assembly and in the use of explosives such as TNT and C4. Ali Ahmed Al Musawi, who is in Iran, coordinated the training and provided Mohammed with logistical support. When Mohammed returned to Bahrain after receiving training, he decided with others to use a car repair workshop in Hamad Town to store bomb making materials and weapons. The group built a hidden room to hide the contraband. In addition to the weapons and explosives training he received abroad in 2013, the suspect also watched films of bombings conducted by the Hezbollah brigades in Iraq. Mahmoud Jasim Marhoun Mohanad Marhoum, arrested 26 years old, private company employee, received military training in Iran by the Iranian Revolutionary Guard and in Iraq by the Hezbollah brigades. Jassim Mansour Jassim Shamlo, arrested 25 years old, private company employee, confessed to receiving batteries from the first suspect that were to be used in bomb making and remote control devices. He hid the items in his flat at his father's home in Hamad Town until the first arrestee asked for them. Ahmed Mohammed Ali Youssef, arrested 23 years old, confessed to providing assistance to the third suspect by transferring the batteries, remote controls and wires for making bombs to his flat with full knowledge of what the items were to be used for. Khalil Hassan Khalil Ibrahim Saeed, arrested 20 years old, student, received a number of batteries and remote controlled bomb detonators from the first arrestee who asked him to hide the items at his home. He had full knowledge of the nature and purpose of the items. The Interior Ministry's counterterrorism investigations continue as part of ongoing national security operations. Members of the public are asked to report suspicious activities by calling the police hotline at 8000-8008, as all calls will be treated as anonymous. على فك وتركيب سلاح الكلاشينكوف وأنواع وطرق استخدام العبوات الناسفة بالإضافة لتدريبات البوصلة والجي بي اس وكذلك تطبيقات عملية على صناعة المتفجرات كما اطلع على مقاطع فيديو لعمليات تفجير قامت بها كتائب حزب الله في العراق المدعو محمود جاسم مرهون محمد مرهون مقبوض عليه 26 عاما موظف بشركة خاصة وقد شارك المقبوض عليه الأول في التدريبات العسكرية بإيران على يد الحرس الثوري وبالعراق على يد كتائب حزب الله العراقي المدعو جاسم منصور جاسم شملو مقبوض عليه 25 عاما موظف بشركة خاصة وقر باستلامه من المقبوض عليه الأول بطاريات تستخدم في صناعة العبوات الناسفة وأجهزة التحكم عن بعد وإخفائها وتخزينها في شقته بمنزل والده بمدينة حمد والاحتفاظ بها إلى حين طلبها بحسب تعليمات المقبوض عليه الأول المدعو أحمد محمد علي يوسف مقبوض عليه 23 عاما وفاد أنه ساعد المقبوض عليه الثالث في نقل البطاريات وأجهزة التحكم عن بعد وأسلاك كهربائية 
تستخدم في صناعة العبوات المتفجرة وتخزينها في شقته مع علمه بمحتواها المدعو خليل حسن خليل إبراهيم سعيد مقبوض عليه عشرون عاما طالب وتسلم عددا من البطاريات وأجهزة التحكم عن بعد والتي تدخل في تصنيع وتفجير العبوات الناسفة المستخدمة في العمليات الإرهابية مع علمه بمحتواها وذلك من منزل المقبوض عليه الأول محمد عبد الجليل والذي طلب منه إخفاءها بمنزله لحين طلبها وتؤكد وزارة الداخلية في ختام بيانها على المضي قدما في ضبط الأوكار الإرهابية في إطار العمل المستمر على حفظ أمن الوطن كما تناشد كل من لديه معلومات حول أي نشاط مشتبه فيه بأن لا يتوانى في الاتصال بالجهات الأمنية المختصة على الرقم 8008 وذلك تعزيزا لمبدأ الشراكة المجتمعية Minister of Foreign Affairs Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa and the Defense Affairs Minister Lieutenant General Yusuf bin Ahmed Al Jalahma participated in the International Coalition meeting to fight the terrorist organization Daesh at Washington DC. In his speech, the Minister of Foreign Affairs affirmed Bahrain's keenness to participate in the meeting in order to address the challenges that face the international community. The minister stressed the importance of combating the terrorist organization of Daesh in Iraq and Syria in order to safeguard the region's security and stability. He also highlighted Iran's destructive role through its interference in Syria and its support to Hezbollah terrorist acts. The minister called on assessing the efforts of the international coalition in order to enhance the efforts of combating such terrorist organizations and to preserve global peace and security. The seventh edition of Youth City 2030, organized by the Ministry of Youth and Sports in cooperation with Tim Keen under the patronage of His Majesty's Representative for Charity Works and Youth Affairs Supreme Council for Youth and Sports Chairman and Bahrain Olympic Committee President Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, has been officially opened by Youth and Sports Minister Hisham Al Joder and Tim Keen Chief Executive Dr. Ibrahim Janahi. More now in this report with Danielle Deporto. Bahrain's ultimate summer school for youths aged 9 and upwards, Youth City 2030, is backed by popular demand at the Bahrain International Exhibition Centre. Now in its seventh edition, Youth City continues to expand its offerings year on year, providing a wide range of programmes across four colleges. This year we have around uh, 80 programmes, while last year we had a bit uh, uh, more than 60 programs. We have here four centers, um, leadership, uh, art center, uh, science and technology and media. So everyone has some uh, skill or interest can fit in any, anywhere here in, in New York City. Being engaged in the city for six years has been very interesting because uh, the, the age limit is around 23. So you, you've got people who've actually I've seen them timid and at the age of 17 or 16 and now they're, they're, they're out there. They're actually business owners. Some of our success stories in Temkin have been graduates of this youth city. Over the course of six weeks, up to 2,000 girls and boys will take classes at Youth City, which serves as an educational career guidance platform covering all sectors and emerging industries. Who prepares youngsters to enter into the market? Schools, the education system, and Temkin has a huge role in this uh, domain. Therefore, this is our sixth year where we sponsor this whole city uh, with the management of the Ministry of Youth in order to um, give all these young people that you see around you the opportunity to actually learn something new, to discover their potential, to discover what they really, their talents and what they would like to do and try different things in life until they really find what their careers should be. In each edition, the Youth City Initiative has recalibrated itself in order to be responsive to the current needs of the business world and the future workforce. The programmes are being delivered by experts in their fields and have been curated in consultation with the students themselves. We have meetings with, uh, with the students and also in designing the, the programs. And also we have a program in, in the Ministry of uh, Youth and Sports that is called uh, Sotkom Mesmo, your, your, sound, your, your voice is heard. So we, we take suggestions and uh, any recommendations. 
Youth City is one aspect of a much broader ecosystem of initiatives and agencies providing platforms for young Bahrainis to develop themselves and become active participants in progressing Bahrain's economy and society. Applications were open to all on a first-come, first-served basis, and judging by its popularity, the next edition of Youth City ought to be even grander. My call for the youth is, is, is the opportunities are out there. You just have to look for them, take them, grab them, and we're here for you. A common ethos amongst the youth today is to love what you do and to do what you love. And Youth City provides the opportunity for these youngsters to really hone their skills and furthermore provides them with a very inspirational environment in which to do this. Reporting for Bahrain Television, I'm Danielle Deporto.